You guys, so I sincerely debated on doing a video about this, but as I go through my own struggles, I want to talk about this. And what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about failed weight loss efforts, okay? So we're going to talk about this and it's going to be a rough ride. guys welcome to my channel if you are new and welcome back if you've been around here a while i'm kendra this is kind kendra creates this is my space where i share my weight loss journey with you i also do commentary on a variety of topics including health wellness fitness weight loss stuff like that and hopefully you'll learn about me along the way so if that stuff sounds good to you then make sure you are subscribed to my channel all right guys so today we are going to be looking at a reaction video type style of Alexandra Rodriguez. So who is she? She's a creator on YouTube. She was also in body positivity. I'm not sure if she's still in that movement anymore because she actually wound up having weight loss surgery. And this was actually not her first time having weight loss surgery. She originally had a lap band surgery back when she was a teenager. It did not work out well for her. I don't know the full story because I don't watch her channel, but this story kind of got me to thinking, so I wanted to talk about it. I don't even know if she lost weight on it or not. I'm really not that invested in her story, but it didn't work out for her. She wound up getting it removed. And so once she got on the internet, she started at a very small fat type size. She was like around a size 14, I want to say. And then she wound up gaining weight throughout the years. And she gained a substantial amount of weight. Um, I want to say, I'm not sure exactly how much she was when she got the surgery. I believe that she was upper 300s. And like I said, I don't know her story. I'm just reiterating what I've heard around the internet. So I can't really specify and state for certain, certain things. If you want to know more about her, then I suggest you go out and do your own research um, so you can get a better grasp. And if you guys know about her, I would love to hear your comments on her and her situation and everything. So she had weight loss surgery and she said she lost 100 pounds. But in this video, she's addressing her failed weight loss surgery. Hmm. So I thought this would be good to talk about because I'm on a weight loss journey. And right now I'm suffering and I'm going through some mental health issues situations. So right now my focus is really not on weight loss. It's just kind of honestly maintaining and not gaining any more weight. That's like my major goal because I've used food as coping mechanisms in the past and old habits that hard y'all. So I'm really trying to work on that situation and it scares me that I won't reach my goal. It really does. It really scares me that I'm going to let my mental health overtake my ultimate goal of losing about 50 more pounds. It's really, really scary. So I wanted to see what she had to say about her situation. I just want to talk about it. So we're going to be reacting to the full video because this is not the full vlog um, of hers, but it's towards the end of her vlog. So it's not a very long um, clip. So we're going to be talking about that, y'all. And I'm going to be giving my opinions and <laughs> we'll see how everything turns out. Okay. So I just took a shower, been kind of chilling. But I don't know, I have something on my chest that I have been like not wanting to talk about, but like feel like I kind of need to talk about because I'm just really sick of seeing these comments. Like I know we're not supposed to let comments get to us as content creators or whatever the word is. I don't like the word influencer, but comments do get to you sometimes. They really do. And like, this is something that's already hard for me but when I like read comments about it, it's just, it just, it's, it's hurtful. Seeing people say like, why is she still so big? How do you feel having another failed weight loss surgery? Okay, so I can't imagine being as large as she is of a creator and having all the negative comments and things like that, because I know she gets them. Um, she's nearly at 500,000 subscribers. So I know she has a lot of eyes on her. And I think that people have to realize before they start sharing certain things online, the type of backlash that they will get. 
you will get people in your comment section that vehemently disagree with you. You will get weirdos that talk crazy. You will get people that cheer you on and that are supportive. And I think that it's hard to ignore all the bad and just focus on the good. I think that's hard to do. But I also think that that is something that just comes with the territory, as sad as that sounds. You have to get used to getting hate. Honestly, you do. And I really think that it sucks that people are saying those things to her, um, you know, because that's the last thing that you want to hear when you're trying to lose weight is you're not you're not skinny yet. You're, you're not thin enough yet. Like, here you go with another failed weight loss attempt. So I can understand that that is hurtful. But I also think that she has to talk about these issues because a large part of her channel has been about her body and her weight loss and her health and her surgery. So of course, like you don't owe your audience anything, but I feel like this is what you signed up for when you opened that door. You know, that's just like me having the issues that I'm having right now and just like not addressing them. Just like skipping over the fact that I gained weight. Like you can't do that. You have to address those issues because I feel like people have looked at you, you know, people subscribe to you for a reason. And so they're invested in you and they're invested in your story and they want to know what's going on with you. Some of it is just like, I'm nosy and I hate you. But a lot of it is concern also. As crazy as that sounds, yes, strangers are concerned about you. Um, so I think that it's hard to talk about these issues, but I feel like it's like a must as a content creator. Comments like that are really, really not cool. People love to bash me about my weight um, and about how I have had gastric bypass and I'm not thin. I have lost well over a hundred pounds. I have been feeling the healthiest, happiest version of myself. I work out consistently three times a week for the last several months. My blood work is great. My blood pressure, my cholesterol, everything is great. I feel so good mentally, physically. It's really discouraging to see people give me so much hate just because I had gastric bypass and I didn't come out of it a year later like super thin like a lot of people do. Now let's talk about bashing people for having gastric bypass. She knew, she had to have known that that was a literal thing. Like, I mean, people talk about medical weight loss interventions all the time. I have done a video on that, not about weight loss surgery or gastric bypass or whatever, but using medical, like medicine to lose weight because that's what I'm doing right now. And people don't like it <laughs> for whatever reason. You know, people don't like it. It's like, oh, we want fat people to lose weight, but then you have to struggle to lose weight. You know, you can't have any kind of assistance, you know, which is so weird to me because any other health issue no one has a problem with you seeking help for it which is so weird to me because obesity is a health issue and you need help with your health issue and if you decide to take a weight loss medication or to have weight loss surgery that is just help it's not going to automatically magically make you lose weight and keep it off so let's talk about that she talks about that she didn't come out of weight loss surgery being super thin like a lot of people have. And I think this is the misconception that people have about weight loss surgery. They think that once you have the surgery, you know, you're going to lose all the weight, you're going to be really, really thin, and you're never going to gain it back. And that's just not how it works. And I say that because I have a lot of um, people, <laughs> sex gender groups I'm in on the internet, and they have had weight loss surgery and they have gained the weight back. And now they're using sex gender to help them lose more weight. And it's just a, a misconception that you're going to be super thin and you're going to lose all the weight and you're never going to gain it back. The thing is, 
that these are just tools to help you. You still have to have the healthy habits. You still have to be in a calorie deficit. You still have to, you know, eat in a reduced calorie diet and increase physical activity to make sure that you are losing the weight and losing the amount of weight that you want. And then you also have to keep those healthy habits up for you to maintain that weight. And we're actually going to talk about it further. I know we are because she talks about how she's doing all these things, but she's still a larger size lady. It sucks because then people assume that I'm eating poorly and people I know, people are going to comment, you eat a ton of bread and pasta. No, I don't. <laughs> I do not share every single thing I eat. Everything I eat is talked about with my nutritionist, my protein pasta. If I have a little bit of bread, it's usually whole grain. Like I don't just eat a bunch of bread and pasta and I don't even need to sit here and explain myself because that's just exhausting. But like, it's not cool to make up assumptions about me and what I eat and my health and my body. It's hard enough to put myself online. Like every, pretty much every day I film um, and just know I'm gonna get scrutinized about my body. You know, it was vulnerable to share me having weight loss surgery anyway. You guys know when I was 16, I had lap band surgery, which people don't even really do now. I had a horrible experience with lap band. Um, I threw up like all my food. It was such a relief when I got it removed a few years after. Um, this experience has been totally different. I know so many people expect you to come out of gastric bypass like thin. That's what you see. That's what you see with a lot of people. Um, and that just hasn't been my experience. Okay, so she talks about like her eating habits or whatever. And I don't know what she eats, but I have heard from around the internet that every the things that she mainly shows are what one would consider not necessarily diet foods. I don't know because I don't watch her. So I'm just going off what people say on the internet. Um, and then she talks about bread and pasta and there's nothing wrong with those things. I don't know why people have this horrible misconception about those, but I have never like not eaten bread and pasta and I've lost a large amount of weight. And then she talks about people assuming what she eats. Well, this is the thing. People are going to make assumptions because we all know that if you're not losing weight, then you're not in a calorie deficit. So that must mean that you're consuming more calories than you are burning off. So people can only assume that you are eating more calorie laden foods, you know? So like I said, I can't assume what she eats. I just know there's not really big deal with bread and pasta. But then I also hear the defensiveness in her voice, which makes me feel like there's something that might be there where there's smoke, there's fire, right? And I think a lot of people have a hard time admitting what they really eat. They really do. I don't, because I mean, it just is what it is. But I think a lot of people have a really hard time either admitting what they eat, not being honest about it, or honestly just forgetting about it. Because there are a lot of things that we eat that we don't even really notice that have calories in it. For like, for instance, like those coffee drinks and stuff, which I don't drink. Um, sodas and teas and things like that. Smoothies, they have calories in them. And a lot of people don't, you know, measure those. And then we have anything that you cook with, like oils and butters and sauces and things like that. They have a lot of calories in them. And then if you're going out to eat, you don't know what they put in your food. You can only estimate it. And it's hard to estimate it because even in my fitness pal, it's hard to try to like find those foods and everything. So I truly, truly believe that she's probably eating more than she thinks she is. And I think a lot of people do. It's not just her. A lot of people do. So I'm sorry that she feels the way that she feels, but... Sometimes you have to take an objective look at is it is it me is it is it someone else is it is it other people like you know you know what I'm saying and then she talks about she talks to her dietitian about everything she eats I highly doubt it <laughs> because like that would be a lot of work you know so I think that if she is eating healthier things why doesn't she show you know the healthier options that she's eating on camera or whatever 
I don't know. Because like I said, I don't watch her. So I could just go off what she's saying in the video and like, you know, her demeanor. That's all. I'm eating well. I still eat way less than I did before my surgery. Um, I, I honestly love the surgery. It's helped me eat more balanced. Um, it's helped me with portion control and like kind of in a forced way <laughs> just because like I get full way more quickly now. Um, I just, I, I'm happy I had the surgery. No, I didn't come out of it thin, um, but that's not to say my health journey is done. And I also don't care about being thin. I care about being healthy and I feel the healthiest I have in a really long time. And I hate that I'm even talking about this because I know it's just fuel for you watching. If you don't like me and you hate watch me and you're just here to critique me, your life is sad. I think it's really sad that you're doing that. And I hope that like you find some love and joy in your life. If you are here watching me and you actually love me and support me, I freaking love you. And I, I see a lot of you guys defend me and that just means so much, but like, it's just not right to critique my body and assume all of my eating habits and just like assume I'm a failure because I had weight loss surgery and didn't come out of it stereotypically thin. That's not right and it's not fair and it causes major issues to people who are in my position who are afraid to share or afraid to get surgery. Um, it's just spreading negativity online in its own right is so it's just so icky that you would want to put someone's mental health in jeopardy. And most of you doing that are the people that have in your bio, just peace and love, like <laughs> positivity only, positive vibes only, like, <laughs> come on. Okay, so then she talks about like weight loss surgery being portion control in a forced way. And so I think this is what they refer to as like the honeymoon phase. And I honestly see this with people using the weight loss drugs. So let me explain it to you a little bit further. So what happens is, is usually when you start the medication, you will have basically no appetite and it's very hard for you to eat a lot. So with such a drastic reduce, reduction in calories, you are losing so much weight and so very fast. And this lasts usually for people a couple of weeks. Um, some people have even, you know, talked about having this feeling for a couple of months. So they are losing weight really, really fast. And they are dropping a lot of weight. And it's the same way with weight loss surgery. I believe they say that it lasts maybe for the first year. You can see the greatest amount of weight loss. Because at that point, like when you first have the surgery, like, you're barely eating anything. I believe they go in stages and first you do like clear fluids, then you do fluids, then you do like soft foods, pureed foods, like you're not really eating a lot. So of course you're going to lose weight and they call that the honeymoon phase. So it's very easy to lose weight in the beginning and you can do that very fast. But then also, if you're not eating the correct foods or you're eating high calorie foods, even though it's in little portions, you're not going to lose as much weight. And it's unfortunate because at this time, you're also not necessarily learning healthy habits. And I say that because I see this with the weight loss medication. These people have basically been forced to starve themselves because that's what the medication is doing, not on purpose, but it didn't do that for me. So <laughs> I had to learn to be in control and I had to learn to make sure that I was making the right choices and making the right decisions. I honestly think this is kind of what she's going through or possibly, I mean, like, I don't know her, I'm not in her life, <laughs> so I can't really say for sure, but it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. And then she talks about, I don't care about being thin. I care about being healthy. And she also talked about this earlier when she talked about, you know, her labs were on point and she was exercising and she felt really good and all of that stuff. But I must say, though, that she's still quite large. Like even when I was at my largest of 386, if I lost 100 pounds because she said she lost 100 pounds, I would still be 286. And I was actually about 274 when I started losing weight again in 2021. 
And I can tell you at 274, at 5'7", and I know that I'm taller than she is, I was big and I was heavy and I was not in shape and I was out of breath. I didn't have any immediate health concerns, but I'm also still fairly kind of young, you know? But as your body gets older, it starts to wear down, especially if you are at such a large weight. And I know that's a lot of weight to carry around. And so while she may not have like sleep apnea or high blood pressure or diabetes or any of that, I feel like she could be healthier. Just like right now, me being 200 pounds, I could be healthier. I really could be because I'm still not where I want to be when I try to run up a flight of stairs. Like I'm like, huh, huh, you know? So everybody has their own definition of health, I guess. And hers differs a bit from mine. I really hope that she doesn't give up. And I hope that she does get down to an even smaller size so that she's a more healthier weight. I just haven't wanted to talk about it because it, it's it's a lot of pressure on, on me anyway. Because like, do you really not think I've put that pressure on myself already? Do you think I'm not already hard on myself? And it's exhausting because honestly, sometimes I feel like I'm just always, I'm always gonna be big. And I've kind of accepted that because I'm not equating that with health anymore. I just, I've always been big since I was a kid. I think you can be healthy and big. And I know when before I had my surgery, I wasn't anymore. And I feel great now. And that's what matters to me. And I'm just going to continue to work on my health, regardless of what I look like. Eating nutritiously, working out, finding balance, healthy relationship with food. Like, that's what it was always about for me and getting healthy to get pregnant. I feel great, like my doctor is like, yes, queen, like it's good, it's good. So please stop with that. If you keep going with it, like you will be blocked. Like that's it, That's not. it's not the right thing to do. This is my platform and I will not stand for the cruelty. I won't. I do appreciate how many people have been so supportive and kind and understanding and like, Gastric bypass is just not a one size fits all and it's not a one size journey fits all either. So just bottom line, be kind to people, spread love to people. You just don't know what goes on in everyone's life. Okay, so there were a couple of points I wanted to talk about in this last clip or whatever. So she talks about it being a lot of pressure on her, which it is. It's a lot of pressure to lose weight and to lose weight online. Because not only do you feel like you owe like yourself something, but you feel like you owe other people something as well. And I can imagine that she thought that she was going to lose a lot of weight very fast and it was going to be easy. I'm sure she thought that. And now she's not. And so now she's on a whole other kick that she feels like she's always going to be big. And I don't think that she put her body through a surgery for her to still be the size that she is. I don't think that she did that. And I hope that she gets over this feeling that she's feeling, like feeling sorry for herself. I think that's kind of where she is right now. And I feel like she's trying to like convince herself of this. You know, I really, I really feel that way because if she had lost the weight and she had gotten thin or whatever, I think she would be saying something totally different. And then she talks about like, you can be big and be healthy until when though, until when? Like, until when? And like, what is your definition of health? You know, I think those two things come into play when you say that people can be healthy and still be big. So I don't know if she's trying to find her place back into the fat acceptance, body positive, health at every size community. But it looks like that's where she's headed back to her roots. <laughs> You know, and then she does a lot of addressing her haters and people that hate watch her and people that say negative things about her. And I tried to go into her comment section because the comment sections are wild and they usually talk a lot of stuff. And it's very informative to someone who is on the outside looking in. And I couldn't find any of the comments that she was talking about. So I'm assuming that her comment section is heavily edited 
And so therefore, I have nothing to go off of. So I don't know what's being said and who's saying what. And then the last thing I want to talk about is gastric bypass is not one size fits all. Indeed, it's not. Everyone is not going to be skinny. Okay, everyone is not going to be skinny. You know, and I think that people automatically assume that that's how everyone comes out of gastric bypass and it just don't work like that. Some people can be average size, even still in the overweight range, but generally healthy. They don't have an increased risks of obesity related medical conditions. I can only speak for myself when I say that being still in the obese category, that my health is not where I want it to be at. And I don't think hers is either, but she can say whatever she wants to say and try to convince herself or whatever she wants to convince herself of or her audience. And I'm being very critical of her because I feel like some of her statements are slightly harmful to people, you know, and I know she's going through a tough time because she feels like she's getting bullied on the internet and people are saying very crude things to her. And I don't think that people necessarily have to say those things to her. They don't have to say those things at all. But then I also think that some of the things that people are saying are probably accurate criticisms. And I know that a lot of people don't want to hear any type of criticism and it hurts their feelings um, because she probably could be further along in her journey. But I can't specifically say because I don't know where she started it. I don't know what she eats. I don't know how long she's had the surgery for. I don't know. All I know is that when I was 386 pounds, the first 100 pounds were not that difficult like they are now. It's difficult to get the weight off now. But very small changes, I was dropping the weight like that. Like just cutting out fast food for me, I dropped so much weight, y'all. Like it was ridiculous. I would look at the scale and I would be like, huh? <laughs> you know, and just going for simple little walks and cutting out um, all those sweets that I was eating. Just so small changes. You know, um, but I'm just speculating on her situation, comparing it to mine, which there's honestly really no comparison to. But I just really hope that she can, you know, work a little bit harder and change her mind on some things and be a little bit more honest with her audience. Um, because she's had problems in the past of being honest with her audience, y'all. Your girl, okay, I didn't talk about this in the beginning, but she got a panic paniculectomy. I'm probably not saying that wrong. I'm sorry. But basically a tummy tuck without the muscle repair part. So she got her stomach cut off, y'all. And she did not tell her audience. And people were asking her like what she was doing and this and that. Oh, she said, oh, I'm just doing weight loss. And it was Weight Watchers. And it was so weird because she was so happy about her food, and she was so proud about it and she flaunted it and this and that and that and this. Okay, do you girl. And she was talking about she got it cut off because of the rashes or whatever, which is vibe, which is reasonable. But like, why wouldn't you just be honest and tell your audience about that? So freaking weird. Because I rarely get them. And when I do get them, they are horrid, okay? It makes it very uncomfortable. I digress, but she does talk about being kind. So I will end this note with kindness as I shall always do. And like I said, I really hope the best for her. I really hope that she continues on with her journey and she can drop a little bit more weight because I know it's gonna improve the quality of her life, whether she can admit that to her audience or not, you know? She doesn't have to admit it to me or anyone else, but you got to be real with yourself. Being in the obese category and being the weight that you are, it still poses risks to your health. So you guys, I hope you liked watching this video. And if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you to continue spreading kindness in a world full of hate. Please be kind, y'all. Comment below anything you want to talk about and I'll see you on the next time. And thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.